Hey everybody, Johnny here. In this video, we're going to look at a way of packing a bunch of textures into one image and then randomly selecting one of those textures to place on an object. Let's get into it. Here I've got an image texture. It's been broken up into 16 slices, each block being 50 pixels by 50 pixels. I want to assign one of these blocks to this plane. But, if I duplicate this plane, I want it to randomly select another one of those blocks to place on that same plane. To do this, I'm going to add a new material to this plane. And using the Node Wrangler plugin, which can be enabled under Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, and then entering Node, choose Node Wrangler. Once you have that enabled, select your principled BSDF node and press Ctrl T. This will add a basic image texture input chain. I'm going to select my tile image and we get this. However, for now we just want the number one on this tile. Going into edit mode, with all of my vertices selected, I'll press U to unwrap and project from view. On the left, I have a UV editor open. I'll grab those UV coordinates and place them over the one. Now I'd like to get this exact as possible. So to do that, I'm going to open the end panel in my UV editor. I can select individual UV vertexes and enter their coordinates. Coordinates in UV space start at the bottom left hand corner. So the bottom left hand corner is 0, 0 and the top right hand corner is 1, 1. X runs along the horizontal plane and Y runs along the vertical. So this top corner should be at 0, 1. This corner should be at 0 on the X and 0.75 on the Y. Since this is split up into 4, these blocks are at 0, 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0.75, and 1. So as long as my source image is lined up perfectly, I should now have my exact texture on this plane. If we want to shift around our UV coordinates, we can use the location of our mapping node. The X and Y coordinates of this location will move the entire UV map that percentage along the overall image. So right now, it's at 0, 0. But if I were to move the X to 0.25, we would see that it gets shifted 25% of the way over, putting our UV map vertices over the two. In the same way, since we have four divisions from top to bottom, we can put those into the Y. Now we would like every object that gets this material to randomly choose one of these 16 squares. To do that, we're gonna need to access this X and Y component of this location vector. The easiest way to do that is to add a converter combine XYZ node and plug it into the location. Now we can adjust the X, Y, and Z coordinates independently. We'll leave the Z alone, we're just going to focus on the X and Y. Next, in order to get a random number for each object, we're going to add an input object info node, which comes with a random number. I'll plug this into the X. Right away, you see that it is splitting this texture in half and not putting it on the even divisions. That's because this random number will be a number between 0 and 1. So we're going to need to constrain it to the values of 0, 0 0.25, 0.5, or 0.75. One easy way to constrain these numbers is using a math node. So going to Converter, Math, I'll drop this node on this line. We're going to change the type to snap. The snap function is a special kind of rounding function. Instead of rounding to the nearest whole number, the snap method will allow us to provide an increment to snap to. So in this case, the increment is 0.5. That means our rounding will either be 0 or 0.5. Because we have four subdivisions across our tile here, we want our increment to be 0.25. Now, if we were to duplicate this plane, we see that we will start getting random numbers from the first line. 
That's because we're only affecting the X coordinate, so our UV map is only being shifted horizontally. To alter the Y coordinate, we just need to follow the same method. I'll duplicate my snap node, connect it to the Y, and connect the random number into that snap node. There is, however, one thing we see here. We are getting numbers from all four rows now and all four columns. However, we're only getting certain ones. Why is that? That's because the random number that's being passed to both of these is the same. So when the random number is snapped to zero, we're getting zero on the X and zero on the Y. So we need to do an additional randomize on our Y value in order that it can be different from the value of our X. One simple way to do that is using a texture white noise node. I'm gonna change this to one dimensional and plug in our random to the W factor. Duplicating these planes out, we see we have representation from across the entire grid. So if you have multiple textures that you need to apply randomly to a bunch of different objects, but you don't wanna have multiple texture files, this is one way that you could use a single texture map to texture them all. You can also use this method to allow you to select a given number. Let's look at how that would work. Given this object, I'm going to go down to Custom Properties. I'll add a property, click Edit, I'll change its name to X, and click OK. I'll add a second property and change its name to Y. Now, if I add an Input Attribute node, set the type to object because I added this attribute to the object and give it the name X, then duplicate this and get this one the name Y and I get rid of my random nodes. Now I can plug the factor of these into the value of my snap nodes. Now by changing the X value on my object, when it goes over 0.25, it shifts over to 0.25. And on the Y value, the same thing. This way, I can select which row and which column I want to work with. So now I can duplicate these objects, and I can set specific ones to specific textures, just by setting these attributes. This is perfect if you don't want the textures to be assigned randomly, but you want further control over them. Anyhow, I hope you find this method helpful. I hope you find a situation where you can use it in your files, and I hope it helps you make something awesome. Thanks for watching the video today. If you're enjoying the channel, make sure to hit subscribe. Check out the description below. I've got a link to our Discord server. We'd love to have you join. Thanks for taking time out of your day to watch this video. I'll see you next time.